Hello and welcome to this week's episode of China Time. Toby, welcome. Welcome. How are you? Ah, oh, busy, but good. Yeah, I haven't seen you again, I think, for another week. Yeah, I was doing labor law training at a company in Sukunda this week. Okay. And you've been busy with? Uh, hearings. I had a... I had a... what do you call this? Con up. Sometime last week. Yeah? Oh, the, for that one, yeah? Yeah, that one where... The employee... Uniform deduction, is that one? No, 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 no. That one was oh. a section 73. But it was also con up, yeah? yeah yes. So, but now the most interesting one is that one where the employee was telling the commissioner that, yeah, tell this man how much he must give me. <laughs> you, as the man of the law, tell this man to do what is right. I've been working there for five years. <coughs> tell this man. Employees think you go to the CCMO, in that case, the bargaining council, no? Yes. Just to get money. <laughs> <laughs> it was more, it was very interesting, but like I said to you, you know, I, I always take caution on cases like that, because you know this guy walks in there with wrong information mm. and he's clueless. Now remember, now the commissioner will sympathize too much with him because he does not know anything, and it's easy for them now. Uh, for, like I can't, I can't forget my first case that I. I lost. You remember? Eh? No, I remember. I will never forget that. <laughs> because thing. there was a the commissioner said you were a monster. I'm, I'm a monster. I'm mm. cruel. I'm rude. You know. <laughs> so and that lady was clueless also. She she did not know why she was there. Even when she was asked, she just said, "No, I must be paid." So like the gentleman last week was like, "Yes, commissioner, tell this man to pay me five years working there." So the the commissioner my said, service money. He, my, no, 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 no. Because he was wrong, wrongfully dismissed. Now he must be paid. Yeah, but staff think when they are dismissed, they must still get their service money. Because some brother told him they got severance pay because they were retrenched. But they don't know what retrenchment means. They just see fire, you see. So therefore you must get your service money. Yeah, but I think I will talk about it one also when I do my, you know, mm. ground floor episode. Uh, I think I'll touch also on that one. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about the mistakes employees make at... The CCMA or the Bargaining Council, in terms of arbitration or so. I am currently busy with a case. I'm representing a high-level employee at the CCMA in Johannesburg. And um, it was just amazing. Unfortunately, I can't say who the people in the parties are, you know, because of yeah. confidentiality. We tell it all year, but not really not everything. We don't disclose names and we don't blame and shame. But, but interesting. Now, the thing is this. You know, I always say there's this story in the Bible. You know, when I do IR training in Tsepo, yes, I tell people, I learn from all people in life. I learn from Julius Malema, for instance. You know, how that man got it right to lose weight and keep it down. Uh, it's like, it's a lesson for every one of us to learn. Yeah, even you, your stomach is getting big, you see. <laughs> I must draw it like this. I learned from Adolf Hitler. I've actually read that book, Mein Kampf. Don't shoot me, I'm not a racist, but... Um, one thing, I, I didn't actually read the book, I scanned through it, but there was one thing that was interesting, I'm, yeah, I'm getting sidetracked again now. There's one thing, what I learned from Hitler is as a young boy, he always went to the shop to look at the news and get updated on the war in South Africa between us and the South Africans and the British. No? Yes. And also as a teenager, he will travel from city to city to start meeting with people and whatever, you know. So I've learned from him not to have a local mindset. It's only me in my house. You know, my, my wife's grandmother, she passed away a few years ago, but in her 90s. She's never, ever seen the sea. She's never been to the beach in her life. Some of us, you know, we, we, we learn just to be focusing on my house, my job. Colored, colored, colored people will always say, that's a bit of a stereotype. <laughs> 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 anyway, so there from Hitler I've learned, you know, sometimes if you're an entrepreneur or want to have a business or oh, excel in your career, you need to have a bit of a global vision, you know, get out of your comfort zone, go and make things happen. Sometimes you must change your personality if that's even possible. Yeah. Like myself, Sture Burke, I don't believe in social media, but I force myself to get on social media and I force myself to speak in front of people. But anyway, so now... Now, you know, this to come back, I also learned from religion. You see, there's a story in the Bible, um, Daniel, the prophet. I yeah, I can't, it was King Nebuchadnezzar, I think. It was in his days, I think it was. 
He was such a wise man that the other wise men in the kingdom got jealous and they wanted to kill him. So they were trying to find fault with him. To go report him to the king. So the king can, the king can execute him and they couldn't find fault with him. So the lesson I'm learning from that story in that table is that if you're, especially if you're an employer, listen, we talked to the employees today. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure the same can be said of employers, but now employees, we're talking to you. If you're going to sue your boss, now you must make sure your, your cunt is queen. Your side is clean, eh? Clean slate. Clean slate. Yeah. Because, you know, the monkeys will come out of the closet in arbitration. Now, we had to, now, now this case now. So this employee, high level employee, applied for a job. He went for the interviews, got email confirmation. He's successful in the job. They, they were talking salary. He accepted. But right before he, and there was also a meeting whereby he was introduced to the executive team. But right before he had to start, she didn't actually officially start yet. Sorry, no job anymore. So now the case is whether this is now like a, was there an employment agreement? And does the termination there of the cancellation thereof constitute a dismissal? But the thing is, 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 you know, when you represent employees, there's what they say and then there's the truth, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it happens, it happens a lot because um, I once did a case at CCMA Johannesburg. Uh, the guy was a cleaner at one of uh, the cinemas that we help. And then he picked up a customer's wallet. But now, he did not take it to Lost and Found, as per rules. So now, he kept that wallet, and then I think there was money, they shared it with a fellow colleague, and then there were cards there. But, you know, the owner of the wallet was frustrated because there were access cards to work and bank cards and other things, you know, which which really he needed. But the guy, when he took the matter to, he was dismissed hearing everything, took the matter to the CCMA. He brought the lawyer, but he never told the lawyer that this is what happened. Okay. I was involved. And the lawyer, when he gets there, he's like, so when, I, when we were there narrowing the issues, you know, Mozart, before arbitration, we'll start with, Mm -hmm. try and again to uh, revert to narrow conciliation issues, yeah? and narrow issues. Then I'm like, just a quick background, this is what... And the lawyer was like, I never, I, not, I didn't know this information. Then I'm like, talk to your guy. Then I stepped outside myself before the commissioner told me to step. Then I'm like, talk to your guy. Then I stepped outside. Then they withdrew the matter. Yeah, so in this <laughs> case, okay, so now... This employee in the office, you now we're going for arbitration. He had a previous law firm helping him. And in their letter of demand, the very first paragraph states that he was headhunted by this company for this specific job. Okay, now we go for arbitration. And you know, in arbitration, at some point, there will be cross examination. Mm -hmm. Now they had an advocate there. You know, and one of the tactics when you cross-examine an employee is to tarnish his reputation. Yeah. To draw his integrity as a witness into this repute, you know. I call it getting under their skin. Oh, and this guy was brilliant. He did that. You know, most of his case, he focused on the integrity of this employee. And they started off with that letter of demand. The very first one that says, he was headhunted. But what the advocate did next is, show the WhatsApps. <laughs> where... This employee approached the executive to say, this is the one woman, to say, listen, I know that data application closed, but would you mind if I still apply? Then she said, send your CV to the HR and gave the email address. And to HR, hello, my name is so-and-so, this employee, this executive said, I need to apply for the following two positions at your company. You know? And then when you look at him, you say, okay, I thought you were head, you were headhunted. <laughs> but now it's clear you approach them and beg them to allow you to apply. Just a quick one. And you know when that happens, Sebo? <laughs> you look at the employees and go like this. Just a quick one. Did you know about the WhatsApps? No. I don't know about it. <laughs> That's why I said. Then you look at the WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. What's happening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're not embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, you know how to figure out what the hell are you going to do. No, luckily, on that... Lawyers later of the mod, it says there on the top without prejudice, you know? Now you're gonna have to start playing that card, you know? 
So on a cross exam re-examination when she, do you see it says that there? What does that mean? No, I can't be held responsible for what my lawyers say. Ah, but you said in that letter, but this is the thing now, that we could say, yeah, in the letter you say that is your, a true reflection of your I, version. I say this. Yes, you know, but just when I thought about this, what a prejudice thing, that advocate came with another one. The 7-Eleven form when the employee filed a dispute at the CCMA. You know what you employees do? You don't fill it in yourself. You yeah. let the lawyer do it. No? And well, then well, the lawyer said the same thing in the 7-Eleven, how I was headhunted. But right at the end of the 7-Eleven says, I promise this is a true reflection of my view. Ah, but I didn't send it. And I'm like... Now I've got a letter of demand that where he was dishonest and the 7-Eleven form where he was dishonest. Technicalities, ne? It's not technicalities, man. This no, I'm just saying the, lawyer, the, lies. the lawyers will use fancy words and technicalities. But who knows that maybe he did tell the lawyers that. I don't know. No, he's denying it now. Look, he did fire the lawyers. <laughs> so you obviously have to do a, 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 a patch up job here. <laughs> but the point is this, when you're an employee, don't just get emotional and ah, I'm going to show the employer, I'm going to write this big 7-Eleven and all these big fancy letter of demands. You must read that thing and make sure it's right because they're going to cross-examine you and they're going to tarnish your reputation. But she's been pointing all the lies. Now the thing is this, an employment relationship is based on a fiduciary duty. Goodwill towards your employer. Yeah. What does it say about good faith, man? If the way you try to get into the company is a bloody lie. <laughs> hey. Talking about the 7-Eleven, there's another 7-Eleven that came through now for one of our clients where four employees were dismissed for negligence where I think they are in the sector of uh, taking care of children and stuff and stuff. So there's a video footage that can prove that. But on the 7-Eleven, like the employer failed to prove the negligence. You must be careful what you write there. And it was done by a union. It's with prejudice. It's going to be held against you. You see how yeah, we get emotional and we start talking lies, you see. But also another thing, your lawyer now. Yes, we're living in a difficult time, Chepo. Google lawyers. Google said this, Google said that. Eh? <laughs> also, these lawyers, no, not all of them, but some of them, what? No, what? No win, no fee. You'll only pay if you win. Those, those kind of lawyers, no? Not, not all of them. The point I'm making is that often I've seen an employer will walk up, will pitch up at arbitration with a lawyer. They didn't prepare at all. Clueless. You feel f well because you're not represented by an attorney. I've seen lawyers sitting there with bundles of documents which got nothing to do with your case. Yeah. Like paging through them now while we're having arbitration, they're planning for the case here after. But it is there because, I don't know, maybe it's a no win, no fee situation or maybe you, you paid them on the spot or <coughs> one of these companies where you pay 100 rand a month and they will promise you the world. I don't know what it is, but you must check your lawyer. You're responsible. They don't prepare. They type things in their letter of demands and their 7-Elevens now, which is not a correct reflection of what really happened. And then you get in trouble. Actually, that's right, because one lawyer actually never applied his mind on jurisdiction one day. He got so angry at the CCM and I'm like, Commissioner, can I raise a jurisdiction matter? This... CCMA doesn't have jurisdiction here. It must go to a certain bargaining council. That guy was saying, why didn't you say this previous time? Now you are... But he's the lawyer. I'm like, but as a man of the law... Don't you know? You must know this kind of things. Commissioner? Commissioner's like, you are right. Isn't that the first very thing you do? <laughs> if an employee comes to me for consult, I first ask them, who's your employer? Yeah. Are you sure this is your employer? Which industry do they fall in? Are they falling under the mandate of the CCMA or the bargaining council? No, the lawyers don't. They just, yeah, 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 we're going to make money. Let's go to the CCMA. And guess what? When we got to the bargaining council, <laughs> he was kicked out. By the because he didn't apply for, for <laughs> local standing <laughs> to appear. <laughs> no, he did apply. Oh. But I think he never gave proper aspect why he wants to be there. Why must he? He just put everything... The company said fault, company said fault, company said fault. Company so he was said, irritating the commissioner? Yeah, the commissioner's like, you know. You see, that is another mistake. People get so emotional now. 
I once had arbitration and the comrades was there, the union, okay? That union rep ended up, now this employee was dismissed for three or four charges. He ended up having a fight with the commissioner and he was so upset, <laughs> he only argued one charge. He forgot about the other three charges. And then they lost the case. And no, I think I was a witness in that case. You were a witness and that employee was like, ah, stupid union. <laughs> I think I was... <laughs> you must keep your union rep under a leash, man. You know, these people are making mistakes. You don't fight with the commission. That's when we take our popcorn. <laughs> we start watching the show, you see. You don't fight. The most important person in arbitration is not you or the other party. Yeah. It's the commission. It's the you commission. don't fight with the commission. Are you nuts? You plant, you plant a good seed in the commissioner's head and you let that seed grow, blossom, <laughs> so that the commissioner can get a clear direction of where we're going with this. Yeah, because there we've seen, uh, even the case you were talking about, the employer, when you represent them, sometimes they don't have a good case at all. Yeah. And the employee destroy his own his case, own case yeah. because of not preparing properly with his own lawyer or fighting with the commissioner. You don't, you don't do that, you know. And that's, But also that's another thing. A lot of employees, you know, they'll try to go alone without representation. You must get representation, man, and you must get good representation to actually spend time with you and prepare. Because you as an employee, you don't know the processes. You know, yeah, you get disarmed very quickly and then you start losing cases, you know? Employees, you see, we are also on your side. We're not always saying employer, employer, employer. We also think of you employees, but do the right thing. Get the proper representation. But we represent employers, no? And, all, and employees sometimes. Like sometimes. In this, like this case that you Most have, of the time, employers. It's employers, yes. We're on employer side most of the time. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we... We're we going to give you some tips. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Toby. That was a, a nice one. That was a nice one. It's, it's a good one. Yeah. So what's happening next week? We'll see. Let's not... Uh, we, I'm continuing with that arbitration. The guy was employee that lied. Who was headhunted. But it was never done. But do you think you, you have prospects? I do think we have prospects. I'm not convinced we're going to win, though. But I definitely think we've got some very good arguments. You know, I, I, I just want to close off with this. Yeah, that was so nice. <laughs> this is the thing that why you must get a representative, because the, the ears are sharp. Now, I'm sitting there now. Now, that advocate is cross-examining this client. But in one of the emails, the company told him, you are successful. Because he sent them an email. They have feedback in his application. Is it successful or not? And they sent in the paragraph with a salary and everything. Right at the end, you were successful. Okay? Or your application were successful. Vrachtag, you know, the advocate read that email and question right at the end. We read that sentence. So, do you agree? Your application was positive. So you changed the word successful <laughs> to positive. And the client was like, uh, he said, yeah, I agree. So when I had to re-examine, I had to say, listen, sir, let's read that email again. What does it say? Positive or, or successful? successful. <laughs> I could see that as because like, yeah, you damn it. <laughs> no, it says you were a successful candidate. There's a bit of a difference between uh, interview and application being positive and successful, isn't it? <laughs> So there's some good arguments yeah. in there. I'm just concerned, you know, the whole engagement in this whole employment relationship started on a lie. Yeah. Hey, that's always a, that's always not such a good thing, you know. Anyway. Don't forget to like, subscribe, put your comments, and then so that we can interact. Thanks for watching. See you bye next bye. time. Bye.